everyone, my name is Lauren Severe and today is going to be a very different kind of video. Today I'm going to be talking about why I turned down a traditional publishing contract for my book. Just so any of you who have watched any of the videos on my channel are aware, I brought out my rainbow shrimp wine glass and it's filled to the brim. What does this mean? Well, everyone, it means I'm about to burn some bridges with some pretty powerful people and probably kill my book and me as an author, my chance at a traditional publishing contract in the future as well. I decided to make this video um, because I started this channel and doing these videos at all based on the principles of transparency and the fact that I don't believe in censorship. And it's going to be a long, very rambling video, so I apologize for that in advance. But I made a promise to all of you, my subscribers and anyone who views these, that I would remain transparent and I would not censor myself or others. And I feel that I have an obligation to be honest on this channel. And I feel like that is going to probably ruffle some, some feathers. For which, not thrilled. But I do feel it's necessary. So, for the better part of this year, I've been talking about my participation in a writing contest called the Win Words Count Pitch Week event that's held in Rochester, Vermont, and I was part of Pitch Week 16. I was one of, you know, a few finalists whose manuscript got selected for the potential prize of winning a traditional publishing contract um, and a national marketing and distribution deal. I first would like to go over, I guess, the results of that. If any of you have been following me on social media or have seen my last video with the indomitable Micah Brown, who was a fierce competitor and still a very good friend, um, you'll know that I was in Vermont for the last leg of this competition just this past week. So, spoiler alert, I did not win the publishing contract, which is fine. I'm not a sore loser. I never have been. I've always been able to be graceful during loss. I'm a firm believer that you learn more from your losses than your successes anyway. I do want to make sure that I go through every step of this before I talk about why I turned down a traditional publishing contract this week so that you can understand that this was a decision based in logic and it was a decision that was not based on emotion or hurt feelings. So I didn't win the competition. Yes, that was a bummer, but I had a very, um, a very polished book. I made some great friends. And I will say that not everything about the experience of going to win words count was negative. I had a lot of positives. I have a book that is so polished in such a short amount of time. And I learned so many things from experts in their fields that I never would have had a chance to talk to or to workshop things with or to read my work to ever before in my life. And that was invaluable experience to me. So as I'm going through things that I wasn't thrilled about, I want you to keep in mind that I did still have good experiences. I felt like I did learn a lot. Um, and that I don't think that even bad experiences are always all that bad because you learn more from them most of the time. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. I did have some really great times. I don't regret going through this experience at all. However, I cannot in good conscience encourage or endorse anyone um, who watches this channel and has been watching this journey to go through the same experience as me unless they understand a few of the things that I felt were unclear during this process. If you go into something with your eyes wide open, more power to you. It's kind of how I feel, right? So let's talk about the competition. 
So I got it. Sorry. I got accepted into the competition um, and really started going around January, February of this year. The first week that I traveled to Rochester, Vermont was for Meet the Judges, which is supposed to be like a week long boot camp where basically all of the different components of the competition you workshop in this like boot camp atmosphere in this like gorgeous, picturesque writer's retreat in Rochester, Vermont set in the Green Mountains with all this great food and ambiance and other writers of renown and these, you know, just these incredible people. It was all of that, fair enough. But what they don't tell you is the hefty price tag. It costs a lot of money to do this. And I wanted to invest in my future career. I wanted to invest in my dreams for once after undergoing infertility and IVF and everything else and, and always constantly doing for my husband and for other people, for once I wanted to invest in myself. And so I sat down with my husband and we had very long discussions and we said, you know what, we're gonna do this. We're young enough that if I wanna take a risk, this is the time for me to take a risk and to go after things. So we paid the hefty price tag, okay? And that's not including travel costs. So that's all fine and dandy. Well, then they don't tell you that there are additional services that to get your book polished in time, to have the, you know, the professional editing and professional cover art and all of these things, they're additional. And you'll have a better chance of winning the competition that you've already invested in if you also invest in certain services. For me, I did not get value out of some of these services. Some were great, some were not. And I'm gonna detail those to you right now. The first was editing. So they charge you for editing and what they tell you that you get is a comprehensive um, line by line edit from two professional editors for the first 20,000 words of your manuscript. Okay? And so I paid that because I said, yep, an edited manuscript versus an unedited manuscript. I choose the edited one. And of course, I didn't do my due diligence. I didn't check credentials. I should have done more research, but I thought going through the services of the competition would probably look better in my favor that's what the other competitors are more likely to do. And I don't have enough time because of the short time frame to shop around for different services, right? So two people edited my manuscript, neither of which are professional editors, at least to my knowledge. One of them um, was is the person who hosts the writer's retreat who said that he has a background in advertising. Um, I'm not sure, maybe maybe he went to school and did get professional, you know what? I don't really know their credentials because because I didn't do my research. So I'm gonna retract that. I don't know if they're professional editors or not. What I do know is I did not get a comprehensive 20,000 word line by line edit. What I got <laughs> was one, developmental edit that relied heavily on a comparison for a novel that was not in my genre. For which I could see a few parallels because it was very mainstream and a couple of those were good points, but the entire feedback was based around comparing my novel to a best-selling novel in an adult genre. And I was writing young adult fiction. So I was kind of like, I can't use a lot of this I have to sort of pick and choose what I use here. And I was really kind of hanging my hat that the second editor would really do a better job. The only thing is, I didn't get the edit from her until one week before I went my first time in mid-July to the Meet the Judges event. What did this mean? First of all, since it was a developmental edit and not a line-by-line -line edit, all of her feedback was on a previous version of my book two revisions before I went to meet the judges. So when I finally got it a week before going, 
I could use none of her feedback because it didn't apply. I had already fixed the problems that she'd pointed out. I fixed them because of beta readers and critique partners and sensitivity readers and many, many other people who helped me. And basically, because me, in my own recognizance, did my own market research. So that I was not thrilled with. I wasn't, not gonna lie. The cover art design and the cover art designer that I used was fantastic, phenomenal. I have no bad things to say about her. She was professional, she was on time, she really listened to my feedback, she gave me a gorgeous cover that I'm so in love with, and it's high quality. The one thing I will say is that when paying for the services of the cover art and the editing, no one mentions anywhere that you're going to also have to pay for the stock images separately. So that was a nice little surprise. But I don't like to be surprised whenever I'm dealing with a business transaction between two people, two professionals. I don't like surprises that have to deal with money. If you didn't detail it out to me whenever money was being exchanged, large amounts of money was being exchanged beforehand, then that makes me feel uncomfortable and it makes me feel like I shouldn't trust you very much, quite frankly. So that was my only little note about that which is not necessarily the cover artist's problem, you know, and not necessarily anything that she did wrong. So I'm not gonna say anything about that because she was being paid by the person who was like taking the money from me as like a contracted cover art designer. So kind of not on her, okay? Moving on to the marketing omni marketing strategy feedback basically the only thing it said was use your past and your struggles as a sob story and there market your book it told me nothing about how to find my audiences it told me Nothing about how to show to the judges that I can reach my audiences and sell books to them. It told me nothing about how to find the market data that I needed to research to make this a comprehensive two-pronged approach. I did all of these things on my own recognizance. All of this was before I went to meet the judges. So all of this happens and I'm still optimistic, okay? Still optimistic high in the sky, I'm just not understanding things or asking the right questions, operator error, right? Then <laughs> I get on a plane, which has been delayed three times, get on a connecting plane, fly into Boston, then have to drive four hours after my rental was like messed up and all of that, which actually turned out pretty well. Um, so it's been a long day and I'm a very far, far away, away from home. And I finally get to this gorgeous, picturesque, 1800s renovated farmhouse out in Rochester, Vermont, right? And it is gorgeous and picturesque and all of that. And the website is horrible and does not do it justice. Um, so I will say it is a beautiful venue that is very inspirational. But we get there, I start getting unpacked. And then one of the staff members comes around asking for credit card numbers. And I said, oh, for what? Oh, for your food for the week. What? Wasn't that paid in like the large chunk of money that I gave you to come here in the mandatories? No, that's extra. That's like $500 extra. And it was listed nowhere. In fact, me and the other contestants one night sat at a round table and I asked them the question, am I the only one who was like dumb enough that I didn't know that that was gonna be like an extra charge? Because I really thought that it was just me not understanding. Nope, they were all under the same impression. So it was very unclear, very unclear, needs to be more transparent, 
more streamlined, more, more easily understandable so that people understand what they're paying for, when they're paying for it. I mean, I was just really unhappy with all that. So Meet the Judges was a great week-long adventure. I met some really great people, author of renown. I mean, we got to workshop with judges who are like, these people I would never meet in a million years. And that was an incredible experience, you guys. But we didn't practice everything that was going to be in the competition. You know, which I get, like, you know, I was still, like, not sure about the marketing stuff. And, I, you know, I was just kind of like, I was like, I, you know, I'm not understanding some things and some things need work and whatever. And we got so much feedback on the things that we did workshop that I kind of understood not even going too in depth with certain things. Because from the breakdown of like the point value for each thing and whatever, there were a couple of things that like the neighbor's lunch and like the reading for the neighbor's lunch, like that wasn't going to be judged. There's no point value to that. Okay. We don't really need to workshop that. We workshop that the most. The reading and the elevator pitch. But whatever. Okay. It was a crazy busy week. We had so much done. Then finally I get home and it's like five weeks, six weeks until the next week of the competition when you actually like do all the things, right? And the thing is, I didn't really have a ton of time in between. I felt pretty, and I know no one did, but between John's hip and everything else, I was feeling a little bit like I wasn't going to put my best foot forward. So I wasn't like super shocked when I didn't win because I really felt like I could have used another couple weeks, you know, to really make my presentation more solid. I can admit that. I can admit when I, you know, when I feel like I needed to do a little more. I just was spread really thin. And the competition was steep. There were some really good books there. Some really good writers there. Okay? I didn't win. That's okay. Um, and no hard feelings the fact that somebody else won. Like, good for you. We're all writers. Like, hello. Let's uplift each other and encourage each other. Right? Um, but, same sort of thing. Oh, hey. Need money for your food. Okay. Here's more money just out of my pocket all that there were a couple of things about the competition that were unclear there was this like about the author thing right that was like I guess preparing for if you do like an interview or you do a reading and you open the floor for questions so you know how to like answer questions and like talk about yourself in like a polished way and you know what we're writers. We write beautiful words. That does not mean that we can speak well in public. That is something that does terrify me. So it was a valuable lesson to learn. But it was very unclear what was expected of us to prepare. And I asked about it several times. And I never felt like I got a clear answer before having to do it. And then when we practiced um, our marketing strategy presentations... Um, they said, oh, I need to check numbers for you and I really need to give you some feedback because there's some things that you need to add, like you need to add some slides and all this stuff because you're like missing stuff, which freaked me out because I've been working on it for like six weeks and doing my own research pretty much because my omni marketing strategy felt like nonsense to me because it wasn't connecting with me and it just felt like they weren't actually telling me how to tell people I could sell books, just who I was. And um, so, yeah, so that was very stressful. And I asked about it several times. Hey, when you get me those numbers? Hey, when are you telling me about these slides that I need to add? Hey, when am I getting this feedback? I got the feedback an hour before I did the presentation. For a service I paid for. An hour. That is unacceptable in business. You deliver, you deliver what is promised of you and you do it in a timely enough manner that I can integrate it, that I can have it fully realized in a presentation, especially when it's in a competition setting. 
if I did that at my job, that kind of shoddy work and just didn't care when I got things to people, somebody could die. It's not acceptable. It's just not. Okay, so that really, really didn't sit well with me. But even through this, I soldiered on. Competition results come in, I didn't win. I was a little bummed, but you know what? I was happy for the winner, still happy for her. You know, I thanked the judges sincerely for taking the time to read my work and to help me get my book, you know, as good as it is and all of that. And I was polite and I was very civil. And I left feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good about myself because I had integrity and I had character and I learned a lot and I knew I was gonna learn a lot more and I knew that I had learned a lot about marketing and I had learned a lot about the publishing industry and I had learned a lot about things that you don't learn a lot about just writing books. You know, the art of selling books. It's like a whole different world. So I was feeling pretty good about everything still. <laughs> kind of like, well, that was a very expensive lesson, but it was a lesson. And that was a lesson in and of itself, how much money I spent and the services that I got for it and all that. Like that was all a lesson and I'm just gonna learn from it and I'm gonna move forward with grace. Until this week, when I was then 100% sure that I had to make this video. So I got an email. Good going. Judges loved you. They still want to offer you a traditional publishing contract. Let's set up a time for the phone call. I got the phone call set up. I was so nervous and I was so excited and I was over the moon. Even though I didn't win, they still wanted my book on their 2020 roster. And I finally, after how many years, got the call. Mm-hmm. And when I got the call, do you know what the call said? Hmm. I need a drink for this. Mm. <sighs> we want to publish your book so much. We're just going to need $9,600. And you get your book in Barnes and Noble and brick and mortar stores and all over the United States. Also, also, I just like, I can't even like say this. I, I, I can't even say it without like really just cringing, but also, since we'll publish your book for $9,600, um, we'll give you a 20% discount. And you can pay, take as long as you want to pay for it. But don't you worry because you're going to get 50% of the royalties instead of just like a measly 25 like the winner of this competition. Hmm? Let that sink in for a second. Anyone have a, like a scam alert going off in their head? Because you should. Mm -hmm. You should. Does anyone know the word for a publisher who has an author pay to publish their book with them? Anyone doing a Google search right now? Yeah. So... <laughs> Let me tell you how equally heartbroken and happy I was to have this conversation. Heartbroken because all of those little red flags and misgivings that I'd had that I ignored and pushed aside because of how much I really liked everyone and the whole experience and had such naive, optimistic hope about everything. All of those things you know, we're suddenly very clear. 
And that was heartbreaking to me. But I was also so extremely happy that I was not the winner of this competition. Because it would make it incredibly hard for me to say no. It would make it incredibly hard for me not to be associated with what I personally consider to be unethical and predatory business practices. And I am very glad that I did not have that hard decision to make. This was hard enough. You work your entire life as a writer and you finally get this book idea that really speaks to you and that people want to see and that is marketable and that you get polished and all of this stuff and you put your heart and your freaking soul and your blood on that damn page and then, and then this. Okay. So, for those of you who might be a little confused or not as familiar with publishing practices, let this be a lesson to you. If anyone believes in your book, that your book is good, and I mean really good as a publisher, good enough that it can make them money, you will not have to pay anyone to publish it. Because not only are you going to make money, but the publisher will make their money back. That's basically what a traditional publishing contract is. It is a publisher as a business saying, this is a good investment because we know we can at least make our money back in sales, if not a profit, preferably a profit, but we know we'll at least not lose money on this. Right? And if a publisher thought that my book was good enough that they weren't going to lose money on it, then why would I have to pay them to publish? For higher royalties? Let's do a little royalty math for those who might not be familiar. Okay? And I'm going to use some round numbers. So this is not even a hardcover release. It's a paperback release of my book. So paperbacks, let's say on average, are what, $9.99? Let's round that up to $10. Okay? So you go, wow, if I sold 100 books at $10 a pop, what is that? $10,000, 50% royalties, I would get $5,000? That's amazing. No, you wouldn't, sweet summer child. No, you wouldn't. In fact, to really make this analogy sticks, because I've had some wine, let me pull up my calculator so I don't make a total idiot out of myself. Um, because I'm not editing this video at all. I'm just going to upload it and like watch my dreams of a traditional publishing contract burn. Um, anyway, so let's see. 100 books, $10 pop. That's $1,000, not $10,000. So that'd be 500 bucks. Awesome, right? Awesome. 500 bucks? No. That's not how it works. So this $10 book, okay, $9.99 rounded up to $10. This $10 book being sold on the shelf at Barnes & Noble for $10, that's a paperback book, which is pretty average here, um, was bought by the bookstore from the distributor at wholesale. What that means is it was bought at a lower price than sticker price, so when they put it on the shelf, and the bookstore sells it for $10 plus tax because tax goes to like the state and the city and whatever and not to the bookstore, they still get a profit off that sale. So let's take two bucks off, okay? So that's $8, right? Still not bad. How much does it cost to print and ship these books? Because that's not included not included. So let's take off another four bucks. Okay. And I'm being generous with that. Four dollars to print and ship a book wherever nationally. Eh, that never happens. So let's be generous and say four dollars. So four dollars times 100 is four hundred dollars. And then divided by two, you get a two hundred dollar profit off of a hundred dollar books. So you would basically, um, 
be making two bucks off of each book that you sold. Now, that still sounds pretty good to some of you, considering that there are like books on Kindle and ebooks and stuff that are self published that are like 99 cents and stuff, right? But the publisher, when you've already paid for your cover art, you did. They didn't. You did. You paid for your editing. You did. Not them. You've written your cover copy. They didn't have to have anyone help you do that. Um, you've come up with your headshot because, yeah, I did that too. You have literally done everything that you needed to do to get this book ready. And then you came up with a multi-pronged, beautiful marketing strategy, right? And then you pay them $9,600 for the privilege of printing these books so you can make two bucks a copy. Do you know how long it's going to take you, especially without them helping you with marketing and promotion, with you doing that because you came up with your strategy? How many books you're going to have to sell to recoup the money that you spent so that they can hold the rights to your book for a period of however many years because you're under contract before you ever see a dime of profit? If you ever do, that's some royalty math for you. Yeah, you're going to have to sell at least 5,000 books, maybe out of the trunk of your car. Don't know. And that's with generous math, not even realistic math, round number math. So, this week, during the course of many emails, and a couple of phone calls, I had to tell a publisher, not once, not twice, not a publisher, the guy who like works in congruency with the publisher from this win words count pitch week competition. I had to tell him not once, not twice, not three times, but four times that I was not going to do that. I would like to think during this experience that some of the judges, some of the authors of renown, some of the other people who are involved in this process, that they don't understand that this is being run in this manner. I would also like to believe the very best of people that maybe the guy running the whole thing, maybe he's like not aware, you know, maybe he just thinks this is like how it's done normally you know maybe maybe he fell off a potato truck when he was nine years old and hit his head and he just thinks that's like normal i would like to believe that because it would mean that i still have faith in people and i think it's probably how i'm going to process this whole experience by giving people the benefit of the doubt and trying to be kind and move forward with grace and not be so hurt by the fact that I know that the people who are involved in this are going to see this video. And I really, really want them to know how much I appreciate everything that they did for me while still sticking to my guns and dying on the hill that if I can't walk through this life with integrity and be honest about what's wrong with those kinds of opportunities being lauded when really they're just setting people up for failure who don't know better, I think that's more important to me than having a traditional publishing contract. You know, I, I didn't think there, I thought I would do just about dang anything to make this dream happen because it's been a dream that I've had my whole life. And it's been a dream that I think people look at me and they think you can't do it. And I think it's a dream that 
felt really impossible for me for a really long time, especially when I was going through some of the biggest storms of my life. But I think the only thing that I would want more than to succeed at this is to make sure that I'm doing the things that I do and I'm saying the things that I say in this public platform that one day my son will be able to look back and be proud of me. I want him to say, that was a hard thing that you did, but it was also right. I want him to say that being a good person is more important than being a successful one. And I want him to understand the difference between chasing your dreams and trying to win at all costs. Because there is an important distinction there. There is an importance not just to the result of something, but how you did it. And, um, yeah. So I turned down a traditional publishing contract this week and it was incredibly hard and heartbreaking. And it was the right thing to do. And I made a promise to every single one of you that I would be transparent and open. And I fulfilled that today. I hope you enjoy my new background. <laughs> um, my husband did a lot while I was away to help get my office and everything together and we're still working on it but when it's done I, I hope to be able to do kind of an office tour with you guys and um, I am still going to seek publication for my fantasy my young adult fantasy novel songs bottom maybe not through traditional publishing but I will be sharing it with you guys I think that after really looking deep into my heart I, I want to set a goal for myself but it's going to be a soft goal so it may change that by fall of next year fall of 2020 i'll have it published and um, that may mean that i start my own you know um small indie publishing group and go from there or it might mean that i just self-publish or it might mean that i try to start querying I haven't really figured that out. I need a little time to uh, take a break and sort of get away from the emotional journey that I've been on through all of this. Um, I do have a ton of videos that have been uploaded. The reason that it took me a week to get another video up to you guys is because I knew this one needed to be next. And honestly, I had to gather the courage and it took those conversations and those emails for me to figure out exactly what I needed to say, honestly. Um, but so be on the lookout for those. Plan to have plenty of videos coming up about marketing, about building your author brand, all of that that I talked about before. And I have quite a few books that are on my TBR uh, pile, which is so high right now. I think I'm going to spend some time just reading for a little while and making these videos and content for you guys. Um, but I have some really spectacular reads coming up for October. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays, so I'm really excited about that. Maybe I'll even do like some on-camera Halloween costume ideas or special effects makeup because I learned how to do that when I was in theater in college, um, which would be super fun too, to play with all of that, just so you know. Anyway, um, no promises, but maybe. Also, I want to say that three weeks ago, before any of this started, I actually uh, made a Patreon page. That's right, I joined the bandwagon, crazy enough. Um, and I was kind of like unsure if I wanted to talk about it on the channel, 
because I just didn't know how I felt about it from like an ethics standpoint. But then I realized there were some really cool things that I wanted to be able to share with people, but not necessarily the public at large. So there's like gonna be blooper reels. There are some um, never before aired videos that are super emotional um, that talk about a lot of things that are from my past and things like that. Some character art that I had commissioned um, for my book and possibly even the first chapter of Songs of Autumn will eventually go up there as a teaser. And um, of course, I just told you I spent a ton of money on this, which led to nothing. And I would like to be able to invest more in creating better content for y'all. And so any of the money from my Patreon page will go directly back into my YouTube channel and creating content for you guys. Um, just because I feel like that's how it should be. <laughs> um, also, probably my journey to publication since now I'm pretty sure I will have to self-publish just because basically just accused a publisher of being a vanity publisher and it's probably not going to go over well even though I have a lot of respect for everyone in that group. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to be a Patreon, that would be super cool. Also, this was a really hard video to make and it would mean a lot to me if you would comment or like or subscribe. You know, it would, it would really honestly mean the world to me if you decided to go on this crazy journey on wherever the hell I end up with from here. Um, but this has been a really long video and I know you're sick of talking to me and you know what? I want to finish this wine with my husband and a fire out back, even though it's really hot outside in Louisiana. It's going to be real pretty. So I don't know, I'll be downwind and, and just try to relax and act like it's fall or something y'all. Um, yeah. So thank you again for listening to all of this. If you made it to the end, I wish I had a prize for you, but I don't just me, just silly old me. Anyway, uh, until next time, you guys, happy writing.